And tonight we are very fortunate to have with us again Tom Waters, who needs no introduction to this group. When there are giants among giants, Tom really fits that. The problem is he would never assume that role out of his humble and very honest way of dealing with people. Everything was, was was bait fishing in those in those years. Uh, there were some men that did fly fishing, and I got into that fairly young, tight flies too. But, and I had a little sign out front that said "Worms for Sale." And then later I added night crawlers. You know, you went around with a flashlight, and then after a rain, and they'd be on the surface. And you had to catch them quick because if the light shone too much on them, they disappeared down their hole. So it was almost as much fun catching night crawlers as it was fish. Yeah. Um, there was a railroad track uh, nearby that followed a, a stream that was not a trout stream. But I started fishing that for chubs and little bullheads and such, uh, probably about the age of four. And uh, when I when I learned to could drive, <clears throat> and uh, the later years of high school, I I could I could go quite a ways, of course. And that's when I first started writing too. Uh, I think as I was about twelve, I wrote a trout fishing story, of course. When he retired. I asked him. We were in the car together after we were leaving the retirement party, and I said, "So, Dad, is there anything you can tell me?" Um, that I can glean from what you have, you know, your life, you know. This is sort of the end of your career. What can I learn from that? What would you pass on to me? And I was expecting him to say something like, um, you need to get an education, you know, you know, something academic. And what came out of his mouth really kind of surprised me when he just said simply, get outdoors more, spend more time outdoors. He used his, cl his classic studies Stream drift looked uh, fundamentally at stratifying space and time. Space across the river, time, looking at hourly drift all through the 24-hour cycle. That concept can get applied in just about any research. He was well respected, and I'm sure that he, uh, he gained the ear of a lot of decision makers, um, used his professional credentials wisely and effectively. It was a, an attempt <coughs> by the ATV riders and, and uh, some of the people in the DNR back around 98 and 99 to develop ATV trails. So at that ATV meeting, the whole room is um, divided and it's people pro-ATV, anti-ATV. And Tom instead is talking about how do you how do we want to use and respect the resource? Um, there's a place for ATVs to be, and there's a place where they aren't. And um, how do we kind of come together and figure that out? So he was a voice of reason in the room, um, certainly had his personal principles and values, uh, but he also helped, I think, to bring some consensus to the table and um, helped us to find a way to figure that out. There's a philosophical bent to what he writes. As you can see, there is um, beauty in his mind in the wildness of these streams. It starts with sunshine and it ends with fish. 
and everything in between is in there. And that book again is what? Wild Stream. It's out of print. He he's also I think written probably what I consider one of the finest books in the English language, The Streams and Rivers of Minnesota. A brilliant construct. Wild Stream equals it too. I think if you really want to understand what goes on in a in a small stream, uh, a trout stream in particular. Uh, uh, Wild Stream uh, is the place to start. Talks about what you were saying, invertebrate drift, talks about productivity, talks about all the um, uh, various fish species that you're going to find in small streams. The design of streams and rivers of Minnesota was was written for average people like me. Right, yeah. And, and it starts off with this, this brilliant construct. He's talking about with, he's talking with another angler at the beginning of this book. Well, let's sit down on this log, put the fly rods up, and we'll talk about rivers. And then he goes through every major river system in the state. And at the end of the story, at the end of the book, he says, well, that's been a nice afternoon. Let's get up and go fishing again. You pick up the rod and go fishing again. Very few of my professional colleagues, including myself, have made the contribution um, that Tom has to the general public in terms of his popular writings of scientific literature. That is really a tremendous contribution when you can have an outstanding scientist like Tom take that knowledge and present it to the general public in the way that he has. But we can do the best that we can and we know more, much more, about uh, protecting streams and rivers in other parts of, uh, of uh, our, our natural world as well. My interest has been, been in, in streams and rivers and uh, everybody has their specialty, I guess. And, uh, that's what I've worked with. And I went from science to teaching and research um, to uh, advocacy. And I enjoy that very much, especially when we win. <laughs> we'll go down in history as one of the most important stream ecologists, uh, not just a trout scientist, but stream ecologist of, you know, of the last century. Ever-increasing uh, passion for people to, to preserve bits and parts, at least, of, 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 of the natural forests and rivers and, and lakes, of course, here. So I love it here. You feel warm out here. River song. I hear the song the river sings that makes a gray day brighter. I hear a rapids round the bend and grip the paddle tighter. When sundown shrouds upon the stream, a cloud of mayfly spinners, the bat and trout alike appear to claim their evening dinners. A nice brown trout then takes my fly, my bamboo rod a quiver forming waves of golden foam upon the swirling river. And when at last in that he lies, two pounds, I guess I'd say, I gently take my fly and hook and watch him swim away. An errant sunbeam strikes a spark in the dark of a cedar's shadow to light the depths of a deep green pool neath a young kingfisher's rattle. With end of day when shadows fall on friends and fire and river, and softly then the currents sing a song that sings forever. <laughs>